Housing inventory is starting to drop all across the country, leaving many investors curious, is the housing market behind us? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the two data points that you need to look at in order to determine if a housing market has bottomed or if we still have a lot to go. I'm Brian Decker and I own over $20 million of real estate and I've been a real estate investor for 20 years. And on this channel, you're going to get real time data and real estate investing tips every single week to increase your net worth and your IQ. So let's get right into the video. We all know supply and demand affects price. And we know in the housing market today, demand is definitely suppressed. It's at some of the lowest levels that we've seen in over a decade. However, even though you have a reduced amount of demand, if the supply of homes is also significantly reduced, you don't see prices fall as in certain markets where you have suppressed demand but growing inventory, we can look upon the horizon and realize, ugh, we got a lot lower home prices to be seen in the coming months or years. So what I like to utilize when I research a market, and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over several housing markets across the country, markets where we see a surplus in inventory and markets that we've seen actually a decline in inventory from what the normal levels are. Now, I see so many real estate investors making the wrong conclusions because they're using the wrong data points. What they do is they say, oh, look, we had 1,000 homes for sale in the market last year. Well, now we have 2,000 homes in this market. Now, inventory's up 100%. The entire real estate market's gonna crash. Well, what you have to look at is, is you have to understand that last year in 2022 and 2021, inventory levels due to the C-19 pandemic were at their lowest levels in United States modern history. So you can't compare the housing inventory in a market today with the single data point of what it was doing last year because every housing market had a record low housing supply. So what data points do I use? I'm gonna show you exactly how you can analyze any market and you can get this information directly off Realtor.com's Data Research Center. And before we go any further, if you wouldn't mind doing me a favor and smash that like button below and drop in the comments below your housing market because I'm gonna pick a couple housing markets and in my next video, I'll do a live analysis for you. Now let's get back to it. So what I like to look at in a particular market, we're gonna look at Austin. So we see that the total number of homes for sale in Austin right now are 8,339 homes. We wanna look at it and if we compare it to just last year, that was only 3,199 homes. So we see, oh my gosh, the inventory is up 160%. And you think to yourself, wow, Austin's just gonna crash off the face of the earth. Home prices must be going down 50%. And though I believe Austin is really going to correct another 15 to 20%, that data point of comparing current inventory levels to the lowest inventory levels we had seen on record is a terrible way to draw an accurate conclusion. So what do we do? We wanna look and say, okay, Let's take 2016 to 2021, and let's add up how many homes were for sale at a certain period of time in each one of those years, and then take the average of it. So that way we see, okay, 2016, 17, and 18 were more normal housing markets. Whereas in 19, we got a little bit elevated inventory levels. In 2021 and 22, we had really suppressed inventory levels. So by drawing that blended average, we're gonna really be able to compare are we in trouble in Austin? Are there way too many houses for sale compared to what a normal market is? And so if we use realtor.com, we can see that there was typically an average of about 6,200 homes for sale. So 3,100 a year ago shows we had half the inventory levels. Whereas realistically right now, we're about 33% over. So in Austin, in this market, and how you should analyze every market is you need to look and say, okay, are the inventory levels right now at a surplus to that average from 2016 to 2021, or is it at a deficit? Because if it's at a deficit, home prices are gonna be very stable and could appreciate in certain markets. However, other markets are like Austin that have a huge surplus it's not looking pretty. 
And you can see clearly on this graph what happened to these inventory levels. And we've drawn this dotted line that you can see what the median is. So we are right now about a 33% surplus. So there's 33% too many homes on the market compared to normal. And mind you, it's further exacerbated because buyer demand is about 50% of where it was between 2016 and 2022. So I am not buying a house in Austin, Texas right now. My personal belief, as well as the belief of like good buddy of mine, Tark, who's a very famous real estate investor on Flip or Flop, we were just talking about Austin and Texas. We think that this market could be as much as 25 to 30% declines over the next 24 months. Now, let's look at another market. So now, I wanna look at one of my favorite markets where I have one of my own second homes, a market that was just booming over the last four years, and that is Nashville, Tennessee. So now what we could go ahead and see is Nashville, Tennessee, the inventory level is about 7,200 homes right now. We look at the inventory last year, 2,500 homes, guys. 2,500 homes there was only for sale last year in Nashville. I can tell you there were 20, 30, 40 offers on houses. I got offers on some of the homes that I bought for 700,000 in 2020. I got offered 1.2, 1.3 million dollars just 18 months later because there was a massive migration to Tennessee from California and Washington and many of those areas. And this just absolutely smashed the inventory levels to record lows. Well, we look at that and you look at, you almost have a 200% gain in inventory just in a year. You're gonna look at Nashville and be like, oh my gosh, that's one of the worst markets I've ever seen. But once again, we've gotta actually compare this $7,200 number to what the average inventory was over the last five or six years. And we'll see that the average inventory is only about 6,500 homes and we have 7,200. So we can see the inventory when we had only 2,500 homes, we only had 30% of the inventory we normally have. That's what led to those massive price increases. So in this case, we're looking at it, Nashville is about 10% surplus, meaning we have about 10% too many homes for sale. So by looking at that, I definitely feel far more confident that Nashville is gonna see not nearly as large a potential price declines as we are seeing in Austin because we have a much smaller amount of surplus. Now, we still have a surplus of inventory and we've seen buyer demand significantly down from where it was during that six year period, but I do not think that Nashville is gonna see a 20 to 25% drop, which I could see Austin having. I think it's probably gonna be about maybe another 10% in price declines. And now for the last market I wanna look at, I wanna look at a market local to all of us. And that market is San Diego, California. San Diego, we all know, is one of the greatest places to live, but it also at last year alone, we saw home prices in many markets go up by 40% in 18 months. 40% in 18 months. I had bought one of my properties for $800,000 and I was doing a flip on it, thought I would sell it for maybe 950. We ended up getting $1.3 million for the property because home prices had went up like 25% in just four months in San Diego in 2021. So let's take a deeper dive on what the actual data is telling us about San Diego. So first thing we're looking at, we only have about 4,000 houses for sale. So you think about that. 4,000 houses for sale compared to 7,500 houses for sale in Nashville. And San Diego is a much larger population, definitely. So that is far fewer homes for a lot more people. We saw last year there was only about 2,100 homes for sale. So by looking at this, once again, people are gonna draw their conclusion. Oh my gosh, inventory's up almost 100%, 87% to be exact. Oh my gosh, house prices in San Diego are gonna fall off a cliff. However, once again, we got to, what is the actual average over the previous six years, typically the number of homes available for sale on the market at any time. And we'll see it's about 48.88, so about 5,000 homes. We're still almost 20% below what the normal is in San Diego. So by looking at Austin, Nashville, and San Diego, if I was a betting man and I was gonna bet which of these three markets are gonna see the smallest price declines on homes, San Diego all the way guaranteed. Not just because I love San Diego, but because the data is telling me it. Because we now have a deficit of still 18% fewer homes for sale than normal. So 
What I'm going to be going ahead and doing and drawing conclusions, I think San Diego is still going to see some price declines. I think it could probably be between 5 and 10%, but I really think it's going to be in areas in East County, any of the areas that have higher, um, higher rated schools and are closer to the water are going to have a little bit more price preservation. So I hope you guys got a really good idea in this video of exactly how to go over and analyze a market that you want to just simply not look at the inventory today compared to what it was a year ago and say, oh my gosh, inventory's up so high, home prices are gonna plummet. No, what you need to do is use realtor.com, compile about six data points showing how many homes were available for sale, let's say in January of each year of the last six years, add those up and then get your average number of homes typically for sale and then compare that to the number of homes for sale today. And that is going to tell you about the resiliency of that housing market. Now, I hope you guys have a little bit better understanding today of exactly what housing markets are going to be affected more than others. If you want me to look at your housing market in particular and do a live analysis for you, drop in the comments below the housing market in which you live in, and I'll pick three housing markets, and I'll do another video analyzing those markets right here on my channel.